Now, the Archbishop of Canterbury has called the 80 victims of a suicide bomb attack in Pakistan martyrs since they were targeted because of their beliefs. They're not alone. Police in Egypt say they're pursuing Islamist extremists who've incited attacks on Christian targets there. The army has now retaken one town south of Cairo, Dalga, which had been under Islamist control. But some Christians are still afraid to return home. Tim Huell is the first foreign reporter to enter the town after its recapture. His film contains some graphic images of victims killed in the violent attacks. 1,600 years of Christian history reduced to a blackened ruin. This is what's left of the Monastery of the Virgin Mary and St. Abraham in the town of Delga after a Muslim mob attacked it last month. In the morning of uh, 14 of uh, August, uh, thousands of people uh, gathered uh, in the front of the main door and they were calling for jihad. They uh, uh, broke through the main door and they entered here the monastery. They uh, go to everywhere here and they stolen everything in the churches or the buildings. And also they, uh, when they finish stalling, they uh, burned the place here. Christians here say it was revenge for the Coptic Church's support for the overthrow of Egypt's elected Islamist government. Payback for the killing of hundreds of Islamists by the police. Relations between Christians and Muslims here have often been uneasy, but the upheavals of the last two years, both in Egypt and elsewhere in the Middle East, have now led to a much deeper fracturing of society that many feel won't easily be repaired. A horrifying video shows the body of one Christian from Delga, a local barber, killed and later reportedly dragged through the streets behind a tractor. The victim's cousin, a lawyer, has now fled to Cairo fearing the same fate. They attacked his house. He tried to defend himself. They killed him inside the house. They dragged his body out. They stole everything in his house and mine. For two months after the police were chased out in early July, this dusty backwater between the Nile and the desert became an independent outpost of Islamism, or simply anarchy. Christians like this farm worker who fled with his family to live on a building site in a nearby village describe a climate of intimidation where they were robbed or forced to pay protection money. There was this coffee shop that opened at 11 at night. All the thieves and thugs went there and afterwards they roamed around, opening whatever doors they could or jumping over walls. If they found any of your belongings, they took them. Another refugee, also too scared to show his face, says the criminals had political backing, though he's got no proof. The thugs in the town were supported by the Muslim Brotherhood. They were giving them weapons and money because it was in their interests to loot our houses and spread chaos. Now, order's been restored. Troops and police recaptured Delga with little resistance last week, making a series of arrests and confiscating guns. But their job's not over yet. Suddenly there's an alert, and we're off with police special forces on the trail of more armed arsonists or looters. They stake out a house. There's distant gunfire. And soon another suspect has been rounded up for questioning. The state's finally stamped its authority on this town, trying to prove there's nowhere in Egypt where its writ doesn't run. But the crackdown may simply provoke a violent insurgency that will rumble on for many years. Today, though, it's mainly donkey carts that are rumbling on. One man gives the four-finger salute that symbolises Islamist opposition to the new military-backed authorities. But you'll find no Brotherhood representatives here now. Those suspected of inciting violence against Christians have fled or melted back into the crowd. And prominent Muslims here deny the Brotherhood or anyone else organised the attacks. They were thieves stealing for their own benefits. They didn't have any other motive. No one was supporting them. 
Some mosques called for jihad at the Brotherhood protests in Cairo because many people were killed there. But thieves and thugs here took that as a license to go and get what they wanted for themselves. So the message was misunderstood. We've always lived in harmony with the Christians and we work together. The Islamist challenge, terrifying to many Christians, hasn't yet been suppressed here, though the Brotherhood has now been banned. A movement that was the legitimate government of Egypt until this summer is now reduced to raising flash mobs like this in villages around Delga, but they turn out nightly. Up the road, at the headquarters of the provincial governor, they're taking no chances. The security is as tight again now as it was in the 1990s, when Mubarak's dictatorship fought Islamist militants here. I'm going to see the new governor, a former police chief, who believes that now, as then, Egypt's facing an international terrorist conspiracy. We feel in Egypt there is a war against Egypt. The big organization outside the strategy come from outside, you use this local, local people by giving them money, by giving them uh, weapons. The fanatics use this area because there is no education, there is no uh, money, there is no jobs. Uh, they try to push that by, by uh, very fanatic principles, uh, they make big problems between some of the Christian and some of the Muslims. Christians, a third of the population in this province, have long lived side by side with their Muslim neighbours. Poverty unites them. Illiteracy here is almost 50%. Even after weeks of living out of bags and baskets, the Christians who fled Delga are refusing to go home. The police didn't protect them when the violence started here and may not protect them now from a further round of revenge. The government and the police, they are saying it is safe, but they will not stay in Delga forever, and the gangs are saying that as soon as they leave, there will be retaliation. Back in Delga, they say it will take years to rebuild the monastery, just one of the dozens of churches attacked in Egypt in recent weeks. Well, that was Tim Huell. We had hoped to speak to the Muslim Brotherhood, but uh, we can't do so tonight. I'm joined instead from Birmingham by Dr. Ibrahim Habib, who's chair of the United Cops in the UK, and here in the studio by the Egyptian journalist Adel Darwish, political editor of Middle East magazine. Um, Ibrahim Habib, how frightened are Christians in Egypt? Oh, thank you, Jeremy. The uh, Christians had years of uh, threats, intimidation, coercion, and killing, which went uh, unpunished for years. And there was a culture uh, of impunity. Anwar Sadat, of course, announced uh, that Egypt is an Islamic country. He is the leader of Islamic country. Uh, since then, the Islamists felt that they, uh, they have the upper hand. Then came Hosni Mubarak, and during his time, he kept a tight rein on the Islamists, but he overlooked their attacks on Christians. There is a long history of fear. Mm -hmm. There is a long history of intimidation. And really, there is a culture of persecuting Christians by, I'm not saying by the, uh, all of the uh, Muslim population, of course not. Uh, uh, there, there, there is uh, even a new uh, organization in here in England, which is the committee, uh, uh, Egyptian committee for the defense of the uh, secular state, uh, including right. Muslims and Christians. I'm, I'm part of it. Uh, and I'm a deputy of the Coptic United, uh, Union of the Coptic Organization in Europe. Right. Okay. Uh, the, the, there is actually the fear from, uh, from the Islamists comes in the uh, societies where there is poverty and uh, where there is uh, okay. ignorance as well. I Thank mean, you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Just let me just bring in Adel Darwish here, if you don't mind. Um, who do you think was behind these attacks or is behind these continuing attacks? Uh, it's difficult when you collect evidence to pin it on organization. It's always mm. easier to stand in court for individuals like what we had with the IRA and Sinn Féin. 
Uh, but circumstantial evidence, I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood had not really uh, come out uh, when they decided to become a political party. They did not come out and, and renounce past terrorism or even give instruction to their followers saying, we dislike um, that Morsi was overthrown, let's protest peacefully, let's hold vigil. So it, it, it is, although there's no hard evidence, but in one night you had hundreds of churches uh, being burned down and attacked. So the organization is there. Ibrahim Habib, um, do you think, in uh, looking back on it, it was wise for so many uh, Coptic Christians in Egypt to support what was effectively a military coup against uh, the Muslim Brotherhood? Well, first of thing, this was this was not a military coup. This this is a response right. to the popular demand. No, I shouldn't have used the word coup. Uh, military intervention, should we say? Then, do you think okay. it was unwise? No. For the community to support uh, no, that? No, the, the Muslim fundamentalist reduced, the Muslim Brotherhood mm. reduced the democracy to a palatocracy. They used, they really used and abused the ballot. And before that, this was the last step in democracy. Before that, there should be a culture of equality, freedom, freedom of all freedoms, of course, and, and uh, justice for all. Uh, no, no one should be persecuting a minority because they are peaceful. The Christians, of course, they never started a fight or retaliated in a fight. And they kept, you know, uh, losing property and uh, losing uh, families. Right. Uh, Let me this. interrupt you there again and, and bring in uh, Adel Dawish. Um, can Egypt be surprised that this is what's happened? Well, it, it, it's, it's not a surprise. I mean, uh, there's no surprise. I, I, I'm a bit surprised that they actually took it uh, on fellow uh, Christians rather than... But again, it goes into the pattern of thinking. If you read the literature of Muslim Brotherhood or the meeting, I mean, it was an interesting piece in Egyptian Independent, actually, on Masri Lyum, mm. uh, of a meeting of the global organization that took part in Istanbul this week, another part in Lahore in Pakistan. Part of this thinking is if they have enough strife, enough sectarian conflict, then the world will pay attention, then they hope for Western intervention, perhaps not quite Libyan style, but something like that, put enough pressure uh, on some kind of American-led intervention to pressurize the uh, interim government and reinstate Morsi. Uh, it, it's not sort of a coherent thinking, but that's been uh, exchanged uh, in meeting between the Muslim brothers. Thank you both very much.